This year we're celebrating the 125th anniversary of the Economic Journal, one of the oldest economic journals in the world. What we really wanted to do with this anniversary issue was to celebrate the breadth and depth of topics that had been covered in the journal and the relevance they had to today's policy debate. We included two papers by Ramsey, which was a very difficult choice given the limited space we had, and even more astonishing when you know that Ramsey was 25 when he wrote the second of them. The two papers really made fundamental contributions to the foundation of two important fields in economics, one public economics and the other in understanding how people take decisions over savings and consumption over their lifetime. Ramsey's paper was a remarkable one. Frank Ramsey was uh, 24 when he wrote this paper. He was not an economist. He was a mathematician and a philosopher. He was head of mathematics at Cambridge. He was a good friend of, uh, of uh, Keynes. Keynes was his, a bit of his mentor, one of his mentors at, at, at Cambridge. He wrote these two papers in economics. They're both in the issue, uh, which is remarkable for a 24 years old. And he died just a couple of years later, uh, tragically. But uh, what is remarkable about the papers is that they basically initiated entire new fields. The paper I, 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 uh, I wrote about, it is about the theory of optimal growth. This, was, this paper was ignored for many years. Then in 1965, David Cass uh, wrote his famous uh, paper. And uh, he, after writing the paper, he realized that all his results were already in Ramsey's paper. Uh, so it's, it's incredibly uh, innovative. And what is amazing is that if you read the details of the paper, in addition to the optimal growth uh, theory, there are so many other things that the economists only cashed on m many years later. So it's, uh, it's a remarkable achievement. Last year, Thomas Piketty wrote this famous book on inequality and on growth. And some of those intuitions, in my opinion, in a much more profound way, are in Ramesses' paper. He talks, in the last paragraph of the paper is a little paragraph they say, that thinks about under what conditions there will be increasing inequality. And, uh, and, and this spells it now, and they're proven, and they're there. How many people have read the original paper? For me, it was uh, a very educational you know what's in the paper about the basics, you know, the, the optimal growth theory, because that, that was became known for. But if you read through the paper, there are so many ideas there. Uh, the stuff about inequality, the, the paper was not about that, but there is this little paragraph in which it, you know, it tells you how to do it. Uh, about, you know, life cycle theory, about savings, about everything. There has been lots of criticism recently about the formalisms in economics and the use of maths in economics. Ramsey was a mathematician and the mathematics that he uses uh, is pretty sophisticated. And yet he was able to uh, capture the essence of lots of real world phenomena, which are particularly relevant for economic policy. And uh, he was a friend of Keynes and in the paper there is a nice little uh, line at some point is that Mr. Keynes um, suggested an alternative proof for this and he reports Keynes argument but and then he says but mine is much more general and much more rigorous and I think there is a, there is a lesson in that too. Mathematics is not a substitute for a good economic intuition and for a good eye for real world problems. On the other hand it gives lots of discipline and rigor to, to our discipline.